a sweet and fruity nose. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have a first, a really first whiskey from a new built distillery, the Wolfburn. And here on the left hand side of the screen, <laughs> this is my right hand, but it's your left side on the screen, there's this first bottle um, from Wolfburn. Wolfburn was a distillery in the 19th century, I think it was built in 1821, it's written here on the back. It was first established in 1821, rapidly becoming the largest distillery in Caithness. Caithness is the very top of the mainland of Scotland and uh, it, the distillery is placed in Thurso. Thurso is uh, a, a town, the biggest town <laughs> in Caithness. And from there, the, um, the ferries to the Orkney Islands are leaving. And uh, well, this is very remote and uh, it's no wonder that this was the largest distillery in Caithness because there had been many. Um, this one now carries the name of the most northern distillery in Scotland on the mainland. Uh, and it's, uh, and the, the former possessor of this predicate was uh, Pultney in Wick, which is 30, 40 kilometers to the southeast of Thurso. Thurso is an old Nordic name. Uh, it's the river of, of Toa, the river of Toa. Yeah, there is a small river <laughs> going to the North Sea. And uh, they, Thurso has quite nothing um, they are living from fishing and uh, from the ferry <clears throat> going out there. Um, <laughs> okay, to the first bottling. It's called the inaugural release and an inaugural speech or lecture is the introduction lecture of a professorship or a politician or so. This is the first speech of the distillery. It's, it's talking to you. Yeah, have to be very careful to listen. Uh, 2000, 2016 on the bottom and the back there is a, a 29th September 2015 but I think this is the wood manufacturer. ZA South Africa. No idea. <coughs> uh, magnets here. And this is the first bottle, and it's stinky. It, it's something. Some, something is painted. I think the, the the black paint on the inside. It's it's wow. So I have to <clears throat> close this very fast so that the the stinking uh, is not hindering my tasting. Records show the original Wolfburn Distillery ran from. Uh, I said that. Now revived and reawakened. You hold in your hands the first whiskey to carry the Wolfburn name for over 150 years. That's not really wrong, but also not really true, uh, because the old Wolfburn, uh, the new Wolfburn distillery, is not placed at the exact old location, but it was somewhere nearby. No idea where it was. <clears throat> they also introduced their own bottle. It's an engravings here on the uh, bottom. Wolfburn Distillery, and here on the front label there said inaugural release, and this is bottle 272 out of 875, and this is an engraving by laser. So there is no uh, printing, no, the, the, the top is an offset printing, and here at the bottom it's a laser engravement. 46% uh, ABV, <clears throat> yeah, it's uncolored, it's uh, non-chill filtered, 46% ABV, and if you look very carefully inside, you can see some, some haze. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> um, this is the very same bottle, the very same cap on top, but this one carries a normal label, but three of them. So it's quite expensive to produce, and I would suggest that the content 
of both of the bottles are the same. So if you're a collector, uh, I would say <laughs> try the cheaper one. This is only 46, I think. 46 euros and uh, like the 46 uh, ABV <clears throat> and uh, it's also natural color, uh, non-chill filtered and what's the writing here, distilled, matured and bottled in Thurso, Caithness, Scotland. So they produce everything themselves while well, the bottles will be imported as well as the cork typically from Portugal. All of our finest spirit is laid down in special selected oak casks. Yes, as always. Yeah. No, this one is really special oak cask because they are ex-bourbon casks and they are produced as quarter casks. So only uh, half the content of a typical ex-bourbon barrel. And uh, because it's so small, it's maturing faster in those casks because the, uh, the relationship between the inner surface of the cask and the volume of the whiskey maturing in the cask is higher. So there's more transfer of oakiness into the whiskey in those small quarter casks. Typically those quarter casks are used for finishing a whiskey to, to add uh, aroma, but here they use it for the full maturation. And this is clear. They knew in the beginning that they will release this whiskey after three years and a day. They want to be on the market very fast. And so they had to, well, to think about how can I mature a whiskey very fast in a short time? And so there are two ways to do that. First is to use those small quarter casks. And the second one would have been heating up the warehouses in winter. So you have the typical summer, moderate temperatures, then going down to winter. And in the winter, you heat it up for two weeks or three, and then it cool it down again so that the whiskey, uh, uh, the cask breath is one more time in a year. And then you can uh, extract from the cask uh, more aromas. So either smaller casks or heating up the warehouses and well, the smaller cask I would prefer as well. <clears throat> the cork is extremely well done. This is one of the best corks I've ever seen in my life. So when I opened it, uh, there was a, well, a smoke developing. And not a smoke, a vapor. A vapor developing. So there had been a low pressure in Northern Scotland. Uh, when they filled the bottle, no, a high pressure. Sorry, I'm sorry, a high pressure. And they filled the bottle in Scotland. This is quite rare. <laughs> and here, when I opened it, we had a low pressure after front passing through, uh, and then it blop. Very impressive that this bottle was that uh, sealed by the cork. I try to put the video of the opening in here. Yes, I try. Perhaps you can see the vapor developing. No, at first uh, another look at this card box. There's more. Yes, the wolf. It does not look like a wolf. <laughs> it looks strange. Uh, and they say a wolf burn motive is taken from a drawing by Konrad Gessner, the 16th century linguist and zoologist and appears in his work, The History of Four-Footed Beasts and Serpents. Yeah, uh, in Gesson's day, the wolf was a common sight in the far north of Scotland, and on the coast it was said to have a supernatural relative, the sea wolf. Mm -hmm. According to the lore of the time, the sea wolf did life both on sea and land. Gesson's woodcut is thought to show the creature walking on water, but this is not the limit of its gifts. The sea wolf also brings good luck to all those fortunate enough to see it. So probably if you have a drink more, you might see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> 
Our warehouses are beautifully dark and cool. Well, they were, might have the shutters locked. <laughs> and it's cool in northern Scotland. Uh, providing the perfect environment for the spirit to mature into world-class single malt whiskey. Well, I have no idea if they have Danish warehouses or other ones. Uh, typically, the way uh, the development is going away from the Danish warehouses to warehouses with a concrete floor uh, and uh, uh, sheet metal uh, walls and, uh, well, you just have to protect the cast from the intense weather. But the rest, it should breath of the air from the surrounding and you can have a forklift uh, moving the cask around. And the rest will just add <laughs> labor uh, to each bottle. A unique flavor, one of those on the nose. On the nose, you'll find fruit and malty aromas with just a hint of peat. On the tongue, sweet and nutty flavors are present, which coat the palate to leave a very slight pleasant flavor of smoke. Mm, yeah, it is a joy to drink. I hope you enjoy every drop. Shane Fraser, distillery manager. <clears throat> so, here we go. Take a little time to develop. <sighs> a sweet and fruity nose. And a little, well, seashore aroma. Then developing citrus notes, a distinct malty note, of course, and a very distant smoke. Very distant. So it's less than 5 ppm. It's just that much peat smoke that it brings a little bit of complexity. Well, this one is young. The complexity has to be low, but adding this little smoke brings complexity. Vanilla and caramel, no, not at all. It's the distillery character with this sweet fruitiness. And the citrus fruits coming in. And the 46% ABV, nothing to smell of. It's very well embraced by the aromas. So this is a a lighter one, adding some smoke to the distillery character. Wonderfully nutty, some walnuts. So walnuts is not my favorite because they're always too sharp for me. I think some allergic reaction. And uh, then there is some, well, again, sweetness, some spiciness showing up already. And, well, probably honey. Yeah, distant honey, not too sweet. Non-sweet honey. <laughs> I think it doesn't exist. Um, some grapes, probably. And in the back, yes, very, very little oakiness. A little bit of coffee. Yeah, very little. This is a wonderful piece of work that it's that young, three years and a day probably, and it's moving from a wonderful light fruity aroma over a more or less intense taste to a well-round long-lasting aftertaste. And this for such a young whiskey. Well, this is the reason why they use those quarter casks ex-bourbon quarter casks um, because the relationship between the inner surface of the cask and the content is better. So they are developing faster. So might be that those, this whiskey is like a 
five-year-old, six-year-old. So they, they put a lot of brain into their first release. Which distillery started working with quarter cask out of this reason? Nobody. So those people know what they're doing. Really. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come. And uh, I think the next one will have a, a finishing in sherry or a first maturation in sherry cask or even other fortified wine casks. So the next one, I think they will start it before Christmas. Yeah, before Christmas. So in September, October, we will see the next release of Wolfburn. I'm happy to see this next bottle and please stay tuned and uh, have a look at our whiskey database where hopefully the first people, the first users gave their comments to this whiskey and discussed this whiskey with us in our forum on whiskey.com and share this video with your friends. <laughs>